Right, hi guys, I'm Eddie. Let's see if the second part of our low hanging fruits for paper two that is organic chemistry. So, we are going to look at electrochemistry and fertilizers. Right, let's go straight to the question. This is question eight, which is on galvanic cells. Right, so you should basically be in a position to tell which questions are. The low-hanging fruits, the ones that are easy to collect the marks, right? So I've broken my question into different sections. Let's have a look and be, see if we can, are in a position to see which questions are much easier, right? There we go. This is the first party, 8.1, 8.2, up to 8.3. Magnesium reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid, a simple reaction. According to the following balanced equation, give a reason why the reaction above is a redox reaction. This is a simple question which wanted you to just give the definition of a redox reaction. In simple terms, it involves some electron transfer. It involves electron transfer. So that was a simple, a simple, a simple question. Write down the formula of the oxidizing agent in the above reaction. So that doesn't look that much easy. Refer to the relative strength of reducing agents to explain this observation. Fine, that doesn't seem that much a law hanging fruit, right? Let's have a look again on the other part of the question, which is 8.4. What is the function of platinum in the above cell? It is very simple, guys, and of much importance for you to basically understand the structure, the structure of the cells. You should basically understand the structure of the cell so understanding the structure of the cell would help you answer those low-hanging fruits right so the structure of a galvanic cell you should know that in this this one our half cell is using a gas so a gas cannot be connected to a wire so we need a solid electrode which we can connect our wire so that it goes to the external circuit right so what is the function of the platinum in this above cell so it's very simple the platinum is just acting as a conductor a conducting electrode it's a conductor it's just a conducting electrode right then 8.5.1 simple one write down energy conversions that takes place in this cell that's a simple question. Fine. So you should know your energy conversions. Energy conversions. This is chemical energy is converted to electrical energy. Then you have your mark. Right. Function of Q. All these questions are based on the structure of the cell. Function of Q. Q is your salt bridge. If you know the structure of this cell, Q is your salt bridge. So the easy or basic function of the salt bridge is to complete the circuit or to complete the cell. Right. That is the basic function. Or somebody would say it is to maintain is to maintain electrical is to maintain electrical neutrality. These are the law hanging fruits, right? The other thing, half reaction that takes place at the cathode. 8.5.4, the cell notation of this cell, fine. We are now moving a little bit slightly to the medium, to the medium hanging fruits, but we are just looking on the low hanging fruits. Let me go to this, the half reaction that it takes place at the cathode. This one you can easily get it because you should identify your anode and your cathode. But how do you identify those ones? We can identify them from this. This is our standard reduction potential table that is table 4B. So from table 4B, we are having two equations which are here the two equations is this one of hydrogen this of hydrogen or 
we have the equation of hydrogen let me highlight it the equation of hydrogen which is this we also have another one which is for magnesium this is the equation for magnesium those are our two equations right having these two equations we are going to look at the potential values the potential values the one for hydrogen is zero and the other one for magnesium is minus two so now writing down those values minus 2.36 and zero i'm writing them down here this one is minus 2.36 volts and this one is zero zero volts right the one with the lowest e value is our anode then the one with the higher one is our cathode so once you have identified that this is your anode and this one is your cathode you go back to the very same you go back to the very same table standard direction potential table you have seen that this one is our this is our cathode so you copy this equation as it is that gives you the standard reduction half cell this is of the our cathode half reaction equation fine that's fine let's have a look on the next one calculate the emf of this cell calculate the emf of the cell the emf of the cell it's easy for us to calculate that question that is 8.6 emf of the cell right let's have a look on the formula sheet this is our equation for calculate e cell so let's copy the equation nicely onto our formula onto our answer book then e cathode minus e anode remember we've already identified our cathode in the anode right let's have a look now from the reduction potential tables from our reduction potential tables the two equations is this one and this one right so we have seen that this is our okay this is our anode this is our anode that is the anode sorry this is our anode and this is the cathode right so now our e cathode is zero i'm substituting here 0, 0.00 this is my minus sign since i'm substituting i put the minus my anode is negative 2.36 right so from there having a simple calculation like this now we can easily collect these simple marks we have that one so performing your simple calculation this is equal to 0 0.00 plus 2.36 so your answer becomes 2.36 volts which is a very simple thing so you have collected all your simple marks right how will the addition let's move on to the next question how will the addition of concentrated acid to half cell a this is our half cell a influence the answer to question 8.6 we are increasing the concentration of this you know that this or according to our standard conditions the standard condition is this concentration should be one more per cubic decimeter that should be our concentration but now we are increasing that concentration if we increase the concentration of this one then you should also know that the e cell value will increase there is a direct relationship between concentration is directly proportional to that is what you should know so eventually if the concentration is increased it means our answer 
become also increases. Right. What a simple question. Those are low hanging fruits. Let's have a look at another part of the que of, of, of the question paper. That is question nine. This is very, 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 very low hanging fruits that we can easily pick up. The structure of the cell needs to be known. This is our structure of our cell. <coughs> this is the structure of the cell. Sorry. And this type of cell, you should understand it very well. Right. Let me try to simplify the cell. So if I'm to simplify this cell, you should know that this is our negative side. That is the positive. So the negative side, that is where reduction occurs. So that is our cathode. The positive side, that is where oxidation occurs. That is our anode. Right. Then we have an electrolyte here, which is an ionic solution that conducts electricity. Right. Since this process is purification process, when we are purifying this electrode, you should know that it should be made of, of an O. And this one is made of a pure metal. That is, I'm talking to the diagram before I move on to answer the questions. Fine. One word for the underlined phrase above the diagram. Underlined phrase is a solution that conducts electricity. So that one is your electrolyte. Right? Fine. So it's an easy question, this one. Let's see 9.1.2. The type of electrochemical cell illustrated above. We have got two types of cell. We spoke about the galvanic cell, so this one also is an electrolytic cell. Very simple. In which direction, from A or B or from B to A, will electrons flow in the external circuit? Electrons are oxidation occurs here, and oxidation occurs here. Then our electrons are flowing through that side, which is from A to B. That is our nine point. Two. Fine. Perfect. Let's see the other part of the question. Fine. Which electrode A or B is the cathode? I have identified already the cathode. This is the positive side. This is the negative side. The positive side, that is where we have our anode. The negative side, that is where we have our cathode. So that gives us the cathode. So we have answered the question already. 9.3.1. Our cathode is electrode B. Let's agree. This is something which is very simple, right? Impure copper. The impure copper, if the process is the purification process, you know that the positive side, the anode where oxidation occurs, that becomes the impure side or that is where we have an O. This other side is where we have the pure metal. Right, we have said this on the previous on the previous part of the question. Now, the impure copper it means it's electrode A. This is so simple. Right, how will the mass of electrode A change as the reaction proceeds? Electrode A change. Choose from increase, decrease, or remain the same. You should always know that. You should always know that the mass of an electrode, any electrode any electrode which is an anode will have a loss in mass this is what you should know it's a very key point so if this one a is the anode what it means is the change in mass is is going to decrease this will be your answer which is the needed answer. That is the needed answer. So this one is just a clue. Let me put it away now. So it means when you have to answer the question, this means um, you need to say your proper answer for 9.4. It decreases. That is the answer. Then give a reason for that. The simple reason is oxidation occurs 
right these are quite simple things and from that you could have collected all your all your seven marks right let's have a look on the other part which is that of fertilizers from this this one you can clearly see that there are simple easy marks that you need to collect these single one marks the one mark this one mark the one mark and the one mark those are easy questions i mean that you can answer and score your low hanging fruits right you need to basically understand these simple stages of the primary processes i'm talking to the diagram now let me talk to the diagram first let me bring it here so that it becomes a bit clearer i know that for nitrogen okay we need fractional distillation here this is distillation that is where we get nitrogen this one is we obtain it from coal this one we use sulfur we use sulfur this process is harbor i'm interrogating the diagram before i start answering reaction one that is so3 to give us oleum this one is reaction one so it means this is reacting with sulfuric acid compound y compound y is sulfuric acid compound x compound x is ammonia then this is ammonium sulfate right let's answer the question now write down the name of the raw material p we have written the name of the raw material p that is a because we are going to do fractional distillation of liquid a raw material q that is our coal and raw material r that is sulfur right simple as that so now answering our question 10.1.1 that is a or you can say liquid a but that does not matter much what is important is that you have told us that it's a 10.1.2 that is core our answer 10.1.3 your answer is sulfur fine let's have a look on the other part of the question write down the name of process one we have already addressed that 10.2.1 process one is harbor process 10.2.2 name of compound x name of compound x if you understand these primary three primary processes you know the three primary processes and you also know what kind of compound is produced in each of those three primary processes so compound x we produce the ammonia this question is saying name so you don't need to write a formula so the name is ammonia the formula 10.2.3 of compound y formula is h2so4 but if you say sulfuric acid you are not correct because we only need the formula so that is the formula balance equation for reaction one the balance equation for reaction one okay fine that might not seem quite a low hanging fruit it might not seem quite easy so this gives us basically for only these three questions is something which we find to be very easy right right these three questions gives us approximately some 20 some 20 marks and these 20 marks if we add from to the other 30 marks that you've scored so this is giving us roughly 50 out of 150 which is basically 33 percent and 33 percent is a solid basic pass remember you have only answered six question choosing the law hanging six questions choosing the law hanging fruits we are choosing the law hanging fruits out of the six questions and you are already at 33 percent right from there beyond this there are other easy marks which you can access in other questions remember to look out for things like definitions the rice tables check the kc expressions do correct substitutions into the kc expressions do your correct substitutions then you get some marks there also check if there are kc values that are given substitute them you can also stating factors from 
rates of reactions, stating factors that affect Lichatelius principle equilibrium, also stating factors that affect the case itself. Those are some other easy marks which one can score. When it comes to acids and bases, identify substances which are acids, identifying bases, picking up the indicators, giving a choice of indicators, etc. And et Those are some other easy marks which one can score. So you can boost your mark even further with the practice, practice, and practice. Thank you.